Ja! Yes. ja. Let's go, come on! I started this YouTube channel seven years ago and only uploaded parkour videos. Five years later, I discovered the interest in editing photos and travel videos in Adobe Lightroom and Premiere Pro. Now moving forward to 2023, throwing Adobe Premiere Pro into the bin and looking back to it, it was the best decision ever switching to DaVinci Resolve. Soon enough, I found a new passion for filmmaking. That's why I'm so grateful that Dehancer reached out to me, asking if I could test and review their film emulation plugin for DaVinci Resolve. I wasn't told what to say, everything I'm about to show and explain is in my own perspective and personal opinion. So sit back, grab a snack and watch me explain my grading process. If you want to work alongside, simply install this plugin with a two week free trial or use my discount code for a 10% discount on your purchase. So I would say let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and grade some footage. First I'll check my project settings to fit my liking and drag my footage into the media pool and timeline. I do not claim that my workflow is the best out there, it suits my desired outcome and I hope you can at least learn something from it. My first node will be for my exposure, such as white balance and tint. Then I will add two more nodes in case I need them further on. The next node will be a color space transform, since this footage is shot on my Sony a7 III in the S-Log2 color profile, hence the washed out look. And the very last node will be the plugin itself. So for the input, Dehancer is always working on adding and updating new camera profiles. If you can't find your camera or profile, simply create a node prior to Dehancer, like I did, and convert your footage to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. For that, search for your camera profiles, input color space, mine is S Gamma 3 Cine, and my input gamma is S Log 2, as I mentioned earlier. The output color space is Rec. 709. The output gamma is Gamma 2.4, uh, which is used widely in TV industries um, due to its Rec. 709 standards. So here you can adjust your overall exposure, temperature, and tint, as well as defringing your footage. Which which helps dealing with chromatic aberrations often happening when using halation or bloom, which we will do in a minute. I always use the vector scope to check my temperature and tint as well as the skin tone. I can give you a tip, there's a skin tone indicator, uh, just click here and here. This line indicates if your skin tone is perfect. Uh, I will go back now to the very first node, which is called primaries and um, dial in my exposure a bit. Now we can move on to the film developer. I usually leave the film developer off and move straight on to the film profiles uh, where the fun starts. Here you can pick from over 50 film profiles. Each film is accurately sampled with all of its characteristics, which is mind blowing. Codec Pro and Codec 3 Vision profile are my favorites but I tend to switch it up depending on the scene. With the push and pull slider you can avoid clipping in your desired film profiles such as change the color contrast before moving on to your desired grade. Moving on to the film compression tab, the impact slider pushes your highlights towards your midtones which prevents them from clipping. A white point determines the steepness level of your clipping area and adds some contrast to your film. Uh, let's move on to the expand tab which is really important. Here in the expand tab you can control the um, clipping points both for the highlights and the black. You should set those clipping points um, immediately after you selected your film profiles and always come back to it if needed to push more contrast, more blacks or decrease some whites or something. Let's move on to the print section. Here you can select your print medium which is the last stage of the analog production. I tend to use the Kodak 2383 print film or the Kodak Endura glossy paper. For this one I'm gonna use the Kodak one. So with the print settings, um, Target White lets you set the temperature of the light source. Here you can change the exposure, the contrast and with the color density tool you can saturate your colors in a more softer way than the digital saturation slider would do. Turning on the analog range limiter will make your image look more softer and prevents it from clipping so the black and white points get pushed more towards the midtones. If you want to emphasize a certain feeling or emotion such as anger or lust, uh, you can simply add more reds to your image. If you want your film to look more nostalgic or add some texture to it, use film grain. With this tool you can customize the size, the amount, the distribution between shadows, midtones and highlights. 
negative grain is more pronounced in the highlights and positive less so. Film grain is not visible in pitch blacks or pure whites, uh, but it does appear in highlights and shadows. Depending on the amount of film grain you're using in your image, um, it lowers the overall contrast, but for that you can simply go back to the expand tab again and change the contrast or black and white points. Moving on to halation. Halation is visible as a local orange or red halo around light sources. Um, you can discover the possibilities and play around with it until you're liking. Bloom appears only around light sources um, of highlights and it gives a dreamy like vibe to your overall footage so you can play around with that. With the film damage tool you can add dust, scratches, something like that, just typical film damage. I honestly never use this tool but I'm sure it could come in handy. The next one is the vignette tab. Um, almost everyone has heard of this term. The next one is film breath. It gives you an analog-like feeling because it changes the exposure, saturation and contrast, I think, uh, frame by frame. As well as the gate weave, this is like a natural movement which appears when the film gets um, pulled through the camera so it like shakes a bit and the very last tool is the false color um, it's an indicator which gives you an overall look of the exposure values indicated by color zones ranging from purple the pitch blacks to reds um, the brightest and purest highlights a quick break Dehancer also released an iOS app, which I want to cover here by showing you how easy it is to get a filmic look in your photos. These two images of my wonderful dogs are shot with my iPhone 11 Plus in the portrait mode. Select your image and tap on edit. Press on the icon in the upper left corner to open up the histogram, so you will know where your clipping points are, displayed in blue and red, each for the highlights and shadows. Here you have the exact same options I've showed earlier, only in a much more compact way. There are lots of films to pick from and you can honestly play around with all the sliders until your liking. I'm using the Kodak Pro 100 film for this image. You can easily zoom in and check if you like the changes you have made so far. Also keep the clipping points in mind, but at the end of the day, grade however you want and have fun with it. For the film profile, I'm using my beloved Kodak 2383 print. The film grain is as powerful as in a desktop version, as well as the halation and bloom. This effect slows down my old iPhone, as you can see, and the application crashed a few times, but since Dehancer updated and made some bug fixes, the application works perfectly fine on my phone. If you don't want to use a certain effect, simply tap on it and it will delete the changes. Hit the export button and wait a second for it to save. Then you can open up a new image. And if you were liking the edit you've made prior, you can hit the last edits page and then edit it with the starting point of your last edit. Make some tweaks here and there and boom! As simple as that, you have some film-like images shot with your smartphone. Let's get back to the video. For this clip, I'm gonna use a simple mask prior to the color space transform, the CST node, because I wanna emphasize on the eye. I'm gonna make it a bit brighter and push some blues in it, like so. That is before, without anything. This one is only the color space transform for the Rec. 709. And now here we have the complete dehancer look and then the masking, which I did at the end. So. Is this plugin really that powerful? In my opinion, it is. Is it expensive? Hell yeah, it is. Um, should you buy it? I mean, if you have the money, the budget, go for it. It is worth every single penny. You can purchase the whole plugin itself or the light version. Or if you want to save some money and are only interested in the film grain, halation or bloom effect, you can buy these separately without having to spend that much money. But in my personal opinion, yeah, it is worth it all. Especially if you want to spice up your work. Dehancer has made a huge leap with this plugin and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. If you want to feed my ego, 
leave a like a comment subscribe i would really appreciate it of course i'm gonna make more videos like this one in the future and of course i'm gonna stick to the filmmaking part of things if you want to purchase something use my discount code uh, for a 10 percent discount stay safe a happy new year and as always i'll see you in the next one much love